Well, I want to thank everybody. This has been some period of time. And most importantly, we want to thank the great people of Iowa. After Donald Trump's supposed big win in Iowa, so many people have been messaging me saying, what does this mean for the general election in November? Does this mean that Donald Trump's support has not waned despite 91 charges, uh, overturning the election, stealing classified documents, rape? And, you know, you have to ask yourself, what is it about Donald Trump that keeps his supporters so close, so tight-knit, meaning that the likes of Asa Hutchinson, Vivek Ramaswamy, they're just like, OK, I'm out, and incidentally then lend their support to their supreme leader. And that is that what we're seeing and hearing is an awful lot of noise from the Republican camp. There are no primaries for Democrats. Joe Biden is the uh, presumed candidate. Joe Biden has had a very successful four years. He won against Donald Trump in 2020 and shows no sign of slowing down. But Donald Trump is erratic. Donald Trump is losing lawyers, as we heard. He's one of his big lawyers just quit only 24 hours ago. And yet again, he is plastered all over the papers as he's in court again for the E. Jean Carroll case, this time for defamation. But also the fact that Donald Trump loves to do rallies. He needs it. He feels energized by the applause and the support due to his mental health condition, his personality disorder, his malignant narcissism, uh, not to mention his you know, general mental pathology that really should prevent him from running at all. And that's not just sour grapes because I'm a snowflake. That is a clinical position from at least 37 psychiatrists. So, you know, here's the point that we are making. So much noise coming from the Republican side. So much drama. Aside from the debates, which Trump has refused to take part in because he doesn't want it to dent his popularity. Nikki Haley now saying she'll only debate again if Donald Trump is involved. Nikki Haley criticizing Donald Trump, but will reverse course as soon as she's kicked out of the primary and then has to endorse him in the usual way. You see, all of this is theatre. This is a this is a production. This gives the impression that there is action happening on the right and that they are mobilising and that there is a, a huge movement against the Democrats. And it's actually not the case. The reality is that most Americans are thoughtful and understand that to vote for somebody in a general election who is so filled with hatred as the disgraced former president, it's just not something they're going to be able to do. Now, I'm not saying that they are naturally then going to vote for Democrats, but my point is that Donald Trump's popularity is a mirage. He is the one that tells us that he is popular. He is the one that puts on the rallies. They're not calling for rallies. He puts on those rallies. He is the one that bribes people to come and gives away or sells the merchandise. He is the one putting red caps on people's heads. And when we see these videos of Trump rallies where people are asked, would you prefer a dictator in Trump or Joe Biden as the president, they're choosing Trump? Of course they are, because the, the contagion, this Trump contagion, is a, it's a pandemic. It's an epidemic. It is something that has got into the hearts and minds of many, many Republicans, MAGA Republicans, but not the majority. You see, that the, the Trump support, it might be comparatively, you know, compared to DeSantis or Haley, might seem huge, but on the national scale, on the, you know, looking at a, the bigger picture, Trump is actually a, a stain on American political history. He's not a success story. He has lost time and time again. He won one time and has used that one win to grift his way through the next six, seven or eight years. So in my opinion, provided that everybody comes out and votes in November 2024, Donald Trump will not even come close. In fact, he will probably lose by quite a wide margin. Unfortunately, he'll claim that the election was rigged against him and that whole noise machine 
will start all over again. But it, it also proves to me that the American people are not stupid and that you know the majority can see through his grift. They can see that he is a crook. They can see that he is somebody that is not worthy of the presidency. Remember, he, he only won last time because of a very specific set of circumstances, ranging from Russian interference, which has been proven, and, you know, through social media, Cambridge Analytica, but also James Comey getting up and claiming that Hillary Clinton's emails were compromised just a few days before the vote, something that turned out not to be the case. And so, you know, we, we live in this kind of paradoxical society where the media don't know how to handle Donald Trump, so they put him on television all the time. Meanwhile, Joe Biden is quietly getting on with the job. And I think it's that difference that really is the thing that is confusing to people. You know, I received a text from a friend after the announcement in Iowa, and it just said, hashtag concerned. And I, you know, I, I tried to allay her fear by saying, look, don't be distracted by the noise machine. Don't think that America will fall to fascism because, you know, it didn't on 6th of January 2021. And I honestly don't think it will again. But like I say, the caveat to that is everybody has to vote. Don't take it for granted. Don't just think that, oh, you know, America's going to save itself. It won't. And, you know, the warnings are clear. And if you haven't seen my episode of The Weekend Show on an expose on Project 2025, the GOP plan to deconstruct the administrative state, then uh, I recommend you take a look at the video where we spend the time and take the time to really analyze what is on offer in November this year if Donald Trump were to win. So this is just a kind of public service announcement video, really, to say that the noise is not reality. You know, people don't make that much noise. And, and I often use the analogy of the emergency room waiting area where the patients that are making the most noise, the, the doctors and nurses tend to ignore because they're okay. You know, they can make a noise. It's the quiet ones in the corner that need triage and need to be seen by a doctor quickly. I'm Anthony Davis. You can hear me on the 5 Minute News podcast. You can catch me co-hosting Uncovered and also on the weekend show every Sunday with Midas Touch.